Okay, welcome to the Geomatics and Surveying uh, lecture. And we're just going to go quickly through some of the elements here uh, in regards to this uh, PowerPoint presentation. The uh, first thing is, is just the idea of a definition. Good old definitions are always required. And you can see here that the definition of surveying for years was as a science. Science of determining the dimensions and contour of the Earth's surface by the measurement. And uh, that includes surveying everything along the way that we construct. Okay, But nowadays it has been also combined with cartography, the making of maps, and of course good old GIS. The important part here to remember is is geomatics. That's what you need to know as far as a definition. And that includes surveying, which is going out there like we did in the levels and the total stations. Remote sensing, like satellite imagery. Cartography, making maps. And putting it all together through a GIS system. That's the key understanding of geomatics. We won't spend a lot of time on the history of surveying, but as you can appreciate, uh, there was a lot of surveying done in the past, and um, a lot of this huge country was surveyed by those nations, and there was there was many brilliant surveyors along the way. One of the, and you can see here, here's Buddy checking out a very. Uh, older equipment that was used back then and we'll go into that but it was all extensively surveyed and many many people were involved uh, with that survey of our country of course the most famous surveyor we have is sir sanford fleming and is one of one of the most famous and as you um, you can see the queen even recognized and made him sir sanford fleming and he did a huge amount of the surveying and was involved uh, and and here he is right here. This is the this is Mr. Fleming right here, and he was the chief engineer for getting the uh, railway constructed across Canada. And we won't uh, get into all the history sauce over that. The key th and one of the key things is again terms geometry is derived from the Greek word meaning earth measurements, and that's really important because that's what we need to know and so geometry is an important the equipment used I am not too focused on but here is to understand the types of surveys and plane surveys uh, are basically made on small areas where we can assume the earth is flat and how do you do that while well, you do it for small areas like if you're going to uh, survey farms, subdivisions, buildings up to 20 hectares in area. Right? Buildings and area up to uh, 20 hectares. Okay, not 20 hectare buildings. So it's this assumption that the earth is flat for this. Geodetic surveys are, assume, are over larger areas and they uh, make adjustments for the curved shape. So you know how we have zones and and all such for where we're located uh, zone 17 this is all to respect the curvature of the earth and, and is used by uh, governments and like if you use a sur it just understands the convergence of the meridians so we understand the world is round okay and that's called geodetic surveys types of surveys uh, the, the key one we have are topographic surveys for you guys and land surveys. Uh, those are the ones that we work with the most. And of course, uh, they include photogram photogrammatic surveys, hydrographic, water-based, remote sensing. So all these types of surveys are uh, significant. But for you guys, forestry, mostly it's topographic. Uh, the equipment, we're going to kind of jump over that. We've talked about that already in regards to um, out in the, and actually in the lab, levels and total work. Important term to understand here, because you will uh, encounter these people as Ontario land surveyors. These are the legal people who designate uh, 
what is uh, to be surveyed and so these OLS designations or Ontario Land Surveyors they're the ones who uh, indicate have the legal right to indicate the property boundaries uh, now we're going to go into topographic and feature mapping we're going to look at elevations contours grid spot feature mapping like we do in GIS and we're going to look at digital elevation models DEMs so whenever you look at a map the contour map just understand how that works instead of writing down all the numbers they have a baseline measurement and this baseline here would be in uh, hundreds of meters from the base first station from the baseline so excuse me so this here means these two zeros that you are 100 meters from this station so therefore here you would be 150 meters from the base station why do they do that because once you get into huge meters away you drop a lot of the um, numbers at the tail end and that way it's more it's easier to create the maps so just understand how elevations taken at grid corners is dealt with so we always drop the numbers and then we just increase make the increment plus whatever the base okay here we have and then what they will do is take uh, once they have uh, they will do uh, once they have contours they will take a series of measurements random points like for us it would be the intermediate four sites like we did with our, um, elevation and this would give you eventually enough information all these points uh, along ridges banks cliffs to create contour lines and that's what they do okay so then the contour lines were created by taking these um, spot elevations and that's the process we go through so this is a typical topographic map and it shows uh, contours it may show features like roads buildings and such okay and uh, so once you add more features to it it becomes actually a GIS because then we have more added data but just the contours makes it top okay so there we go there's a topographic map and then when you combine data like the actual uh, feature like for example um, back there was uh, feature 135 it has its actual coordinates and then uh, in the data GIS the 135 is linked to so the coordinates are linked to an attribute table in other words it's a house it's framed they have a poured concrete, concrete foundation and it's two stories so this is attribute data which is as you can see here and that is linked to the location and that's what makes the GIS system this here is the exciting part uh, um, you, it's called digital elevation models and what they do is they take contours and then they drape uh, the land over it and then you get this 3D imagery of the, of the land surface and so you get these are called digital elevation models and these three dimensional models are hugely important because they indicate water flow they could indicate uh, aspect slope and they're used a lot and they're used uh, in land surveying for civil engineering and landscape architecture very important element And this is the process, they, they, they have the elevations, the contours, and then they have the pictures. So you have the, uh, all this data, and then you get a 3D model of what it looks like. And here's an example of a very much uh, of a um, DEM, digital elevation model. In GIS world, and you guys certainly know now, that we have many layers which represent one map or tile and here we have the ground cover buildings and so on land use soils hydrology elevation and it goes on and in forestry maps have about 52 different layers so you can appreciate that a map in a GIS system has many layers depending how you do the analysis like what you folks have done in challenge 4
Okay, and so we have data, we have information system, and then we have information coming out. But remember, a GIS system never gives you the answer. It just gives you more options and ways to look at the data across the land. Okay, so, and I, I, GIS software produces the answers? No, it just produces options to look at and graphs. So this is not correct. It does not produce an answer. It produces answers to your question, but it may be a way, different ways of looking at it. So GIS are very powerful. For an example, which way do I put a road into the forest? Uh, based on species at risk, contours, soils, and so on. Well, there could be literally eight ways, but it tries to find you some of the options, and then you, as the forest technician, have to make solid decisions of what is the best option. So here you can see uh, maps, and you've done these before, and it creates all the, the, the data along the way. Okay, so that's just an overview of, uh, of uh, surveying and how it goes from surveying from the beginning uh, of our country to the point of now we use extensive GIS systems. Thank you.